I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Intelsat Epic is a high performance, next generation satellite platform that delivers global high throughput technology without sacrificing user control of service elements and hardware. The Epic platform is an innovative approach to satellite and network architecture utilizing C, KU and KA bands, wide beams, spot beams and frequency reuse technology to provide a host of customer centric benefits. Designed as a complementary overlay to the world's largest fixed satellite network, Intelsat Epic will be fully integrated with the company's existing satellite fleet and global Intelsat 1 terrestrial network. Now to find out more about the platform and its benefits, I am pleased to be joined by Stephen Spengler, President and Chief Commercial Officer. Thanks for joining us Stephen. Now tell me, will the Epic platform enhance the company's offering to its customers? Intelsat Epic is designed to transform our broadband infrastructure globally and we're doing that with a completely digital system. This will enable all sorts of new capabilities that weren't available before but most importantly it will bring more flexibility, uh, more interference protection, security for our customers networks as well as monitoring capabilities. But the most important thing is that it's an open network. It's an open network that will open up the horizon for a wide range of new applications and services for our customers. And we really view Intelsat Epic as the platform of innovation for the future for Intelsat and for our customers. That's great, but what differentiates Epic from other high throughput satellites currently being launched or developed? Well, Intelsat Epic is a global system, uh, first and foremost. We're building out multiple Intelsat Epic satellites across multiple orbital locations around the globe to really have a complete uh, footprint and redundancy of services. At the same time, we're also uh, creating a platform that's frequency agile. In other words, we're very open and we will be using multiple frequency bands, KU band, C band, KA band, to serve our customers' needs depending upon their applications and their specific requirements. I would say that the most dramatic change with Intelsat Epic is that in addition to the, the ability of, of open architecture and backwards compatibility, it's really the capabilities that it brings to our customers, higher performance and better economics. And that higher performance and better economics will allow our customers to either expand the performance and the capabilities of existing networks or open up entirely new markets, geographic markets or segments uh, for their requirements and for their end customers. Now some operators introducing HDS capabilities to their portfolios have opted for a KA band only payload. Why did Intelsat opt for a combination of frequency bands? Well, when we started to look at the architecture and design of Intelsat Epic many years ago, uh, we started with our customers. We started with the applications that our customers were uh, supporting and the services they were delivering to their end users. And by starting with applications and starting with those customer requirements, you then determine what is the best solution, the best architecture, the best frequency band to use uh, for those specific applications. We're very fortunate uh, that we have uh, a large uh, um, global capability in terms of frequency bands and spectrum in C-band, KU-band, KA-band. And so we're able to design the right approach for the particular customer need and requirement. You also have to remember that networks are in existence today uh, in C-band, in KU-band, and increasingly in KA-band. So it's important to allow those customers to continue to exploit and, and leverage the investments that they've made in ground technology to grow in the future using that, that investment that they've made and allow them to have greater capabilities and service performance uh, with that same ground infrastructure. So uh, it really ties back to customer requirements first and the applications that are driving those requirements. Now Stephen, I assume Epic will help Intelsat to future-proof its business. Is this true? Well, the term future-proof sounds like a guarantee, and there really are no guarantees in business. So really how we look at it is, how do we build a sustainable, successful business over the long term? And as I mentioned a, a minute ago, Intelsat Epic is a platform. It's a platform for innovation. And it's not a static platform. It's a platform that we will continue to enhance, develop, and grow over time. Uh, adding new technologies, new capabilities, and new performance and economics uh, as, as we uh, develop it over the future years. At the same time, it's part of a broader ecosystem. 
Intelsat Epic is, is not a standalone uh, service. It's tied to ground technologies that are also evolving, changing, developing, and becoming higher performing over time. And so this, this ecosystem between space and ground technologies, where we believe is, is going to deliver long-term value for our customers in enabling new applications, new services, higher performance, and better economics to drive their business, and then also to support the growth of our business. And finally, when can Intelsat customers expect to start using EPIC? The first Intelsat EPIC satellite is Intelsat 29E, and that's scheduled to launch in the second half of 2015, uh, and will be in service in very early 2016. That will be followed shortly thereafter by Intelsat uh, EPIC 33E, and that will be launched in 2016. But that's just the beginning of the Intelsat EPIC fleet. There are five more EPIC satellites scheduled to be launched between 2016 and 2019. Uh, so we're very excited about the upcoming launch schedule and, and uh, the uh, advent of the EPIC fleet uh, along with the Intelsat global fleet of today. Um, our customers are already engaging with us. We have been very uh, fortunate to have a number of customers across mobility, corporate networking uh, in particular, uh, to make commitments on the Intelsat EPIC satellites. Uh, and so they're getting ready to, to gain those uh, additional capabilities when they come online. But a number of customers are also taking advantage of our current fleet by commencing services on our current wide beam satellites that will eventually migrate in, in part or, or perhaps entirely to Intelsat EPIC in the future. One is Vodacom uh, in Africa where they're using our current fleet uh, for uh, VSAT uh, broadband services um, and cellular backhaul services in, in certain parts of that region that may be moving to EPIC in the future. And the other is Airbus, one of the leaders in maritime mobility services globally, where they're operating across our fleet in KU band today that will be migrating in part uh, to the EPIC fleet in the future. And I say in part because the ultimate uh, network would be a combination of the broad beams and the EPIC satellite providing the global coverage and the performance that they require. So we're really thrilled with, with uh, the customer engagement so far. Uh, we can see how uh, the capabilities of EPIC are resonating. Uh, with these customers and, and the uh, potential that it has uh, for their customers uh, well into the future. Stephen, thanks very much for clarifying what EPIC offers to its customer base. So as you can see, Intelsat EPIC offers a real freedom of choice. Customers will be able to use existing hardware and network topologies, as well as define their own service characteristics, enabling them to offer customized solutions to their end users and build upon their current business success. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching.